Hi. Hi. Happy Labor Day. Thanks, friend. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited today. We oh, have like one of our favorite people coming on the show. Yes, we do. So with that, welcome to Track Girl Summer. I am one of your co-hosts, Natasha Hastings, and this is my co-host, Corey Carter. We are bringing the culture to track and field. Oh, yes. I was like, why did she stop talking? Oh, track Girl Summer. Track Girl Summer. <laughs> Follow me, Natasha Hastings, Twitter, IG, Facebook, YouTube. My mic is giving a little bit too much. Let me turn it down a little bit. Sorry. Uh, follow Corey, the Corey Monster. Twitter, IG, Facebook, YouTube. I hit everything. Most importantly, follow Track Girl Summer. That is why you are here. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. If you're watching this video right now, you should be subscribed to Track Girl Summer. Okay? You know we hit over 200 subscribers on YouTube? I noticed that. I noticed that. Hold on, hold on. Let me get the production together. <laughs> Let's let's keep it going. We need some more subscribers. Um, get, let me get back to my my. Uh, so we stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Times aren't solidified, but you know we come in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's 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 all you need to know. We're gonna do a better job of promoting because we have some things lined up. But we'll talk a little bit more about the schedule for the rest of the week later on in the show. Um, but we're coming every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're bringing the tea. We're bringing the shenanigans. We're bringing your favorite athletes. We're bringing the culture to track and field. So just subscribe. If you subscribe and hit the notifications, you don't have to worry about, you know, missing the party. But anyway, get into it. Uh, yeah. Huh, Corey? Okay, get into it. Get into it. Get into it. So we're going to do a fit check as usual that's how we start our show right no before the fit check remind everyone that we now have a website track of summer where you can buy well yeah merch. it was a part of oh. my fit check so that's why i kind of skipped over that okay, part sorry. <laughs> sorry go ahead you do it so <laughs> fit check get into the twist out okay when mom doesn't have mom responsibilities mom can do you know the twist out. All right. So I got a little twist out going out, going on that I'm really proud of. I did it all by myself. I'm also wearing 400 meter diva collection. I'm wearing an oldie, but goodie money moves on the lips available at Natasha Hastings.com 400 meter diva.com. Either one, it'll take you to the store. I'm wearing some lashes. I think I'm wearing 49 today. I don't know. I just threw on what I could. Um, and then I'm wearing the track girl summer t-shirt. That is available at trackgirlsummer.com, along with our trucker hats, along with some other fun things that we'll have coming soon. But those two items are available at trackgirlsummer.com. So be sure to get your gear from Track Girl Summer. That's my future. Um, faces be like the lashes just open up your eyes and they sparkle. I don't I have a kid it. today, so I was like, let me let me zhuzh myself up. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying not to be that mom that lets herself go, you know? I liked your shirt earlier that you were wearing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll get into my check. Um, you know, Will Clay is coming on the show, so I still let me put my Will Clay merch on Elevate. 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 <laughs> and then just like some... You know, baggy sweatpants because we love a street where we'll work. My back up. I'm not like roll over my dog. But you know, that's how we're coming today, humbly and honest. Um, I've got um, warrior paint. War paint. <laughs> warrior paint on the lips. Um, so let me just pop out with a red lip. Um, so if you want to look like Natasha, pray on it. But you can also try to look like Natasha. Because you're never going to actually look like Natasha, let's be honest. Nobody I'm going to actually look like, like Corey. 
Uh, you'd have to humble yourself below your standards. Uh, but if you, I've already told you to stop you talking about yourself like that. To, um, get into this foreign immunity with collection. Um, you know, send a black woman some money today. Send a black woman. Warrior, Warrior Plate is a go-to. Um, it is it is my favorite. I normally wear it all the time. And so like I've recently been making an effort to like go for other lipsticks in the collection because I'm like, you gotta sell more than war paint, but you know, it is like that. It goes with every skin tone. It's yes. I used to say that like I need to do a special edition of warrior paint. Fun fact. I told her I told her that we need to collab on like a pair of lashes that are just baby lashes because that's all I wear. It's just like just a just a just a flutter, you know. Fun fact: every lipstick in my lipstick collection, except for War Paint, Cory Carter named. Because and I was telling Natasha, I was like, War Paint don't even sound like me. Warrior Paint. <laughs> That's why she keeps calling it warrior paint. But every other lipstick, money moves, track body, um, oval office, it's Corey's creativeness. Um, but let me do the things and let's get into the show. 28 of you lovely people in the party right now. Please, if you're here, remember to subscribe, share, and like. Let's get some more folks into the party. We will be joined by the great will clay um in a few minutes but until then we have a little bit of things to chat about some shenanigans we want to get into we, are we getting into shenanigans today or are we keeping it classy <laughs> well it wouldn't be me who wasn't a sh sh shenan again and again uh <laughs> I should get you a plate, you know. Um, no cookouts for me either, but I have a chili going in the slow pot, the slow cooker right now. So, um, okay. Well, first up, I just wanted to like report about some track news. Um, some road racing 20k USA track and field champs. Shout out to Ben True. He ran it in 59 53. And Erica Kemp ran um, it in one hour. How did I write this? Did I write this wrong? This can't be right how I wrote this. I want to say, hmm, Corey. I'm like, there's too many numbers written down right now. Yeah. I, just I can't realized. figure out what I did. But I, hold on. Oh, she ran it in one hour, six minutes, and 20 seconds. Okay. I wrote like two ones. Um, and yes. I agree that like the show is needs shenanigans at all time. But have you what's a, what's the farthest you've ever had to run? Because twenty k, like a five to run an hour straight. I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. Not interested. I think the farthest I've gone is a five k. Okay. So what about you? I've done eight miles before. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, I can I can I come to you honestly and openly? Honestly, I I wouldn't want you to come to me dishonestly. I don't know if I actually like like running. I I actually do know I don't like running. I love hurdling, and I will do whatever it means to be a better hurdler. But actually running, like if they were like, "Hey, Corey, you could run four hundred, and that's it." I don't want to part that. I'm not listening to Corey, but I'm giving y'all this side of my hair because this side came out like really defined and this side needs like some work. But like, I like training. Corey. I love training for like, I love doing 400 repeats and like the work of training for the 400 hurdles. But if I have this to go out and just run, mm -mm. I mean, no. I gotta go out and just run. I mean, I sprint though, so. But I mean, I well, guess I to be fair, I don't. I don't like long distance like running. Hmm. No, I'm not even talking about long distance running. Like, if they told me run hundred, 
the hundred feels very long to me. Um, I get not that I get bored, but I'm just I'm too used to hundred hurdlings. So like it's like one two three one two three one two three one two three one two three, and the hundreds like I finished driving. I just have to keep running now. Like, which would tell you why I'm not good at the eight hundred because no one should be thinking like that in hundred. But I don't like it. No comment. Anywho, Aisha wants to know if we're going to talk about the two continental tour meets yesterday. I've got like two things. We do have a couple of things to talk about. We weren't planning to, but here we are. So we do have a couple of things from um, those two meets. Uh, Padova, (laughs) right? Did I say that right? Padova in Italy. I think it's Padova. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, Coach Nicole, thank you. It was my first flat twist out. So I'm like really proud of myself. Um, and I spent all day taking down my locks yesterday, washing, deep conditioning, steam treat. Like it was an all day thing. But thank you. Um, the things you can do when you don't have a child to run behind. Uh, but... The two continental tour meets, Padova and Poland. Um, I think the races that we were all talking about are the hundreds, the women's hundreds in both places. Um, and Padova, Jay Oliver outleaned Shakari in 1119. Uh, they finished in the same time, but if you saw the race, you saw that Jay was the clear winner, but it was just, you know, a close race. Um, Shakari. Looked like Shakari. Her start was so so, but her finish is just that she's to me, she's always known for her finish. Uh even when she ran, um, when I saw her run, this is the only time that I've seen her run in person, actually, was at end season twenty nineteen. Her start wasn't that great. She actually was pretty far behind, but her closing speed is just insane. Um and I think but she I think ran that's the thing. Sorry. Her last, I think that's what's that's what's been missing in her last two races. Totally. I feel like she's like stiff and like tired at the end of her races. Um, and especially in a 200, like you, you don't like, you have to be able to finish strong, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad to see that. Like she's like getting back into stride. Um, and yeah. like the times were really fast. Huh? No, I was agreeing with you. The times were really fast, but like, People say that's not the fastest track and they were running into like a negative one. Negative one point when, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Michael Norman, which to me, I'm like, is it a slow track or is Michael Norman ready to drop something? Because Michael Norman won the men's hundred in a meet record in 997 and he just ran 99 in Brussels a couple days ago. So... Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see, um, but you know, but like, yeah. It, if nine ninety seven is the meet record, I feel like it probably is a slow track. Because nine ninety seven is fast, but it's not like it could be slow, or it could also be that no one's really ran there. Ran there. Yeah. Um, apparently, said Norman and Bra- Bracey are like the first to go sub ten on the track. Could be a slow track. Um, time still wasn't sub 11s without the headwind. That's true. That's true. Um, and then the mommy rocket, <laughs> she just still looks tip top form. Like I am, I can't wait for Zurich. Um, is it on Thursday? I don't know what day it is over there, but I can't wait to see this hundred final. Um, because I mean, the Jamaicans are still looking like tip top, like, they didn't run a whole season. Like, they didn't go to the Olympics. Like, <laughs> ten eighty one for the win. And it just looked like a technical, like, I'm working on some things. Um, it, look, it looked like a good, clean race. I was pulling up the, the finalists. Like, right now we have Elaine, who's run 10.54 this season. Tabu, 10.78. Dina Asher smith 10.83. Um, Ajla Del Ponte, 1090, Kambundi, uh, 1095, Kambundi, I always say it wrong. <laughs> um, JB and Oliver, 1096, and Daryl Nieta, 1098. 
And then on the men's side, sorry, that's the women's. Do you want to hear the women's 200? Yeah, let's hear it. Um, we've got uh, Christine Mboma. I always say her last name wrong. 2881, Sharika 2082, um, Dina Asher Smith 21. Sorry, I said 2182. I'm sorry. For Sharika Jackson, 2188 for Dean Asher Smith, Marie Talu, 2208, Des Bryant, 2218, Beatrice Masalingi, 2218, and I'm going to say her name, Did I say it right? Kambunji? How do I say it wrong? 2250. So I feel like the women's sprints is going to be where it's at for the Diamond League finals. I agree. I agree. Um, Who's in the men's hundred finals? I know um, <laughs> Curly is. <laughs> I almost said Come on, per- that's, Curry. That's all I really matter. <laughs> um, give me a second, and I'll pull it up. Um, you think you think Fred Curly is gonna? Um, you think he's gonna win? Let me pull. Up, let me pull up the the. Her, program i'm liking how he's looking going into these last couple of races and i feel like like fred was always already confident in the switch that he made but i feel like with every race since then and with every win since then and i mean it's it's been one or two wins um i don't know i see his confidence and that that 400 fitness kind of kicking in where it's like because it's, it's getting to that point of the season where who still has it, you know? And I, I yeah. think he's he's ticking both physically and mentally. So, oh, Cherry. How could we forget about Michael Cherry? He looked good in the 400 yesterday. Um, that would be dope yeah. to see him pull out the win in Zurich as well. I think he's going to go 43, like the number of um, people we have in right now. But um, we have... In the men's hundred on the list entry list, we have um, Ronnie Baker, Trayvon Brumell, Andre DeGrasse, Fred Curley. Mm, DeGrasse. Yusin <laughs> Abe Moody Jan Mike Rogers, Mike Rogers, Akini Sambini, and uh, Sylvan Wiki. That's going to be a so, good one. Yeah. That's going to be a good one. I We haven't seen DeGrasse. Sorry? What'd you say? I was going to say we haven't seen DeGrasse race since pre, but I think DeGrasse is another one who's confidence and he's just... Yeah, it's going to be the DeGrasse versus Curly show. Yeah. And I, and I refuse to... We have no guests on today, so we can boldly state that we... we Think I'm just gonna do something special because I got we got in trouble when we did it, even though we did um, say that we thought that Andre was going to. Uh-huh. Oh, apparently Andre won that 200 in Poland. We were not paying attention to Poland, guys. <laughs> I, 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 I was over guys. here trying to unpack. Okay, I didn't have no kid this weekend. I was unpacking and doing homework and doing this hair. I, I hate that we're like over here, like we're gonna report on track and field, and like our commentary is like, no, we are gonna report on track and field. That's and, like, why. That's why they're here. Track girl summer is a community, okay? Y'all keep us in check. Really? Y'all, you know, fifty one people in the room. Thank you for bringing folks to the party. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure, make sure you hit the notification bell. Track girl summer. Share, like, bring some more folks in here. We'll be joined by Will Clay shortly. Yeah, I'm gonna text him and see what he is doing. Uh, uh, but yeah, and I think Trayvon. I don't know if he's gonna win, but I know he's gonna be up in the mix. Like I feel like he's looking better than he was looking at the games. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think all of the names that you named, honestly, I think it's mm-hmm. um, it's gonna be an interesting um final. I think uh, I think it's gonna be a hot one. I do. My mic. Okay. So how does my mic sound to you guys? My I'm getting um my feedback over here is up. is saying I turned my like power save off and I don't know why. I don't move. It just turns off. I don't know. 
Um, All right. You want to move on to our last topic before um, Will comes on or? Yeah, I wanted to talk. And I feel like... I feel like we always come back to like mental health, but I think it's important to discuss like, and I know this is tropical summer, but I felt like this is some, this is a problem or issue that's universal with sport in general. And it was just like hard for me to see Naomi. She actually was playing um, during our last live, but I was like, Naomi it Osaka that is. Yeah. Um, you're much louder than me. I've never, someone louder than me, I've never heard that before. That's why uh, you need to get a mic. And I have one that's attached to my camera, but I'll go get one that's like a thing. Yeah. A whole, a whole little, um, I'm on a mic. Um, but as I was saying, with Naomi, it wasn't just seeing her like lose. I think it was more about just how she just, I, she didn't say she was depressed, but it just like, it just seemed like when she said, I feel like for me recently, when I win, I don't feel happy. I feel more like a relief. And when I lose, I feel very sad. I don't think that's normal. And I feel like there's so much pressure when you're, when you're as amazing as her and like when you are winning to like people expect that out of you. And I feel like there needs to be kindness when you deal with athletes because I feel like a lot of people don't really see the humanity in what we do you know Mm -hmm. and I feel like like especially when you're playing a solo sport there's this anxiety that comes like we talk about it like before your race and like I always tell like if anyone who's like nervous before this, it's like it's okay to have anxiety like or butterflies you just have to make them all fly in the same direction you know like don't have like make sure like you funnel it into something and channel it into something that's productive um but like i don't know you should you should be enjoying your well, she's doing amazing things making history and she's she's sad and then like you saw the same thing with like sydney like she broke the world record and she's like crying in her car three days later. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes when you wrap your life around an accomplishment and you get it and you're just like. When your worth is tied to that accomplishment and then it happens and then it's like still not fulfilled. Nothing. It can be hollow sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Um, well, you know, mental I, health is my, um, <laughs> my zhuzh because I'm studying mental health. Um, I've had my, I won't say my experiences with mental health. I won't say that I've ever been depressed or that sort of thing, but I've, I've, you know, had to deal with my past traumas and how those traumas have affected the decisions that I make, um, how I perform, how I view myself, um, my happiness, And I do think that it's one thing to kind of live through those things, live, experience those traumas and be honest with yourself about those traumas. But I also think, you know, Mm -hmm. in her verbalizing them to the world, I I really appreciate um, her vulnerability about it and her honesty about it. Um, You know, when I, think about Naomi. I'm not sure how old she is, but I know she's very young. And I think that, or I know that, um, you know, herself, Serena, Venus, a lot of tennis players, a lot of athletes, and we've kind of talked about this before um, a couple lives ago, where we talk about young athletes being pushed to the limit, right? And when you basically grow up, (laughs) playing a sport and your worth sort of being tied to how you perform. And then, you know, she was just kind of thrust into all of this in a sense of like, you know, how her life changed when she became number one in the world. And then there's also the weight of she's practically carrying Japanese women's tennis on her back. You know what I mean? Like she's become an ambassador for Japanese women in sport, in tennis, And it's a lot to carry. And I know a lot of people sometimes think, oh, this is what you signed up to be. And I think 
what people don't realize a lot of the times is most, mo- excuse me, most athletes are actually like really introverts and really love what it is that they do. And the stuff that comes with doing what you do <laughs> isn't necessarily the part that you enjoy, but it's a part of the territory. Um, and I don't think that we're necessarily, while we're probably groomed to be great athletes, we're not necessarily groomed to deal with being great athletes in front of the world and in front of millions of people. Or, um, or, or to be not great athletes in front of the world. Like when you fall and you aren't like doing well, and then you have to like do a press conference right after and talk about your failure. Mm-hmm. I, I felt I watched and I noticed about her and I was like it must be very lonely to be her because like she lives alone and like I just feel like there was a lot of scenes where she was sitting there quiet not talking and people were doing things to her so like she'd be sitting there and someone's braiding her hair or she'd be sitting there and she's getting a massage or she's sitting there and like they're adjusting her um clothing because she's about to do a photo shoot or something you know mm-hmm. and it, or doing her makeup but it was like she's it was just to me it just seemed like and I know she's like a quiet introverted person but it just seemed like she was surrounded by people but still very alone mm-hmm. and I, it, it like I don't know it just you're right that I don't think the world prepares you for that and the thing is yes she signed up for this but she said that she like wanted to make it big so like she could stop her mom from working because her mom was doing two three do- um, jobs mm-hmm. at a time and that is a lot of pressure to be like you know my family eats if i win you know yeah yeah, yeah. and that's happens with us it's like you know like the way i pay my bills is whether i win or lose you know like it's a it's it's a very cutthroat thing that we we do like i don't I don't think a lot of jobs exist to where, hey, if you're not top 10, not top 10 percent, top 10 of all the people in the world, if you're not the top 10 of people, you can like get your salary significantly reduced, you know, or it's just, I don't know. There's a lot of pressure just to perform, perform, perform. And there's not a lot of room for error. There's not a lot of room to like, color outside the lines does that make sense or like or yeah. have space for you have space to be depressed have space to be injured have space to you know go through some things like you have to be on and we have such a short window of time but like i don't know what do you give up in the process yeah i agree um I can't. I'm. I, I'm. I was trying to pronounce your name. I agree, Natasha. We really need to change the narrative about athletes. Their ability to handle the expectations of the public should be appreciated, not expected or demanded. Thank you. Um, and with that, our guest is actually in the guest room, in the green room. So, Corey, do you want to do our intro so we can bring our guest to the stage? We have a Renaissance man coming on. He is a rapper, designer, husband, advocate. Um, oh, yeah. He's also an amazing athlete. He's a three-time <laughs> Olympian. Um, he has a silver medal from London in the triple lot drop and a bronze in long. He has a silver from Rio in the triple jump. He has a bronze world medal um, in triple um, from 2011, 2013, 2017, and a silver, um, sorry, no, he has a bronze in 2011 and 2013. He has a silver in triple from 2017, and he has a silver in Doha. And then indoors, he has a, did I not write what he did in his symbol? I wanna say he got gold. I'm like pretty sure you got gold. Correct me if you come on. In 2012, in triple. <laughs> in 2018, he has a gold in triple. Um, he's always a vibe. One of the kindest people I know. He does. He, he does a lot of things, but he does it amazingly. And so, um, yeah. 
Well, okay. here we go. He's a Florida Gator. Will, what's up? Thank you for joining us. That was like the best intro for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> what's up, ladies? How are y'all? Hanging in there. How are you? Where are you headed? Can y'all hear me? We can hear you. Uh, so, my apologies. My apologies. We uh, had a hey. birthday queens here, too. We had a lunch date. We had a lunch date, and we didn't know it was going to be like such a long line. And uh, it just took forever to get our food. So, we're headed home now. We just ate. Well, you took your wife out, so no need to apologize. Uh, Corey and I are, are looking for love, so we're not going to hate on, on the lovebirds having lunch. And y'all, you're, you're late for that reason. So we'll, we'll take that. No need to apologize. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Happy wife, happy wife. That's what they say. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. Um, when did you start jumping? How did that come about? Um, I started my, so my oldest brother, he, um, he was a track and field athlete and he, and he played football at uh, Cal Berkeley. And, um, so he, I just really just looked up to him. Everything he did, I wanted to do as a kid. And so I saw him long jump one day. And so I'm like, man, I want to try that. And so when I was, uh, I want to say I started track and field, like club track at like 10, 11. And then I started to uh, long jump, and I ran the 400 in the hurdles. And so, uh, yeah, everything he did, I just wanted to do. Yeah, so, like, I started with that. And then when I got to high school, my freshman year is when I started to triple jump. And then um, my coach literally, like, it was crazy how he, it was like he was a sidekick. Like, he said everything that I was going to do in my career, like, within my freshman year of high school. He was like, you're going to go to Oklahoma. You're going to, like, you're going to go to the Olympics. You're going to be a triple jumper. And I'm like, nah, because at the time, I just wanted to play football. And so I'm like, nah, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm about to go to USC, and I'm going to play football. And then I ended up committing to USC, thinking, like, I'm going to get on a, on a track scholarship and walk onto the football team. And, uh, yeah, the football team wasn't really, like, they, I was just too small. So, Wait, which um, USC are you talking about? You talking about? Yeah, USC on the West Coast. That other one? In California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I committed to USC, and then I decommitted. Ended up going to Oklahoma. And, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of just been up from there. And at Oklahoma, you set the American junior record in the triple. You jumped 17-19 to win NCAAs in 2009. You know, I got your bio together. Um, I see. <laughs> but then you transferred and you became a Florida Gator. Because I didn't know nothing about Oklahoma. <laughs> Look, yeah, so I only know you as a Gator. SEC, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, Oklahoma was my first stop. And then my coach, he uh, took a job here at the training center, Coach Fisher. And um, mm -hmm. that year, like my freshman year, I, I started to get like hit up. Oh, my no. freshman, and then my sophomore year, I had um, like a bad injury. I had two stress fractures in my lower back. And so um, I was just in a weird space. Like my coach was taking a job here and I still wanted to work with him, but I'm like, I, I ain't got it. To, I'm not doing nothing on the track right now to even think about going pro. Um, so I transferred to Florida and, um, at the time they had the best team. I knew I would be training with Christian. I would be training with Omar and I had known Omar since we were kids. Like we jumped against each other. Omar was like a grown man. When I was a kid, I was, I used to jump against Omar and, uh, I would come out there like with a white tee and some basketball shorts on to the meet, to the track meet. We would have like junior meets and Omar come like fully, like he was dressed like a professional track athlete. And I'm like, dang, like, he got his own uniform, like, his his, his warm-up say jumps corp on it. I'm like, dang, this dude is, like, he legit. And so, like, we just, like, have become cool from jumping against each other when we were younger. And so I took my visit, and then uh, I transferred to Florida. 
And then, yeah, from there, you know, I, I was there. I, I was on the team for one year. I trained there for two years. And then, uh, yeah, I went pro. That, that, you guys were definitely an era at uh, UF. Um, Coach Nicole said that Gator team was stacked. And to see y'all, like, jump against each other as a team, even at Florida, but as professionals, it was something to see y'all jump against each other. Because even in how you're speaking of them, you can hear the camaraderie of, like, we're competitors, but we're also teammates. Um, that was also... Um, cool to see and watch but there's so many things to um one of the things that I admire and I think is funny as heck about you and I kind of compare you to Michelle Carter like Will Clay won't jump all year (laughs) but Will is gonna come jump the Olympic standard (laughs) and then go to trials and then be on the team and the rest of us are out here chasing the standard (laughs) sweating trying to get into the things but will is like nah i'm a rap i'm gonna drop an album i'm gonna drop some clothes then oh yeah then i'm gonna go jump <laughs> hit this standard and do this thing <laughs> and then go win some medals on y'all asses like how <laughs> how you know what's crazy the crazy part is like my coach only trains us for trials and the games, whether it's world champs or the games, like he does not care about nothing else. And sometimes I'll be like, Coach, like I want to go do Diamond Leagues early in the season. Like I want to go like jump and compete. And he's like, man, I'm getting you ready for trials. Like, do you want a medal or do you want to go, you know saying, win these meets? I'm like, ugh, like, all right. So he'll literally have us in the hole until it's time to go to trials. So like, I really, I, I guess, I mean, I, I just come out whenever I'm ready, I, whenever like the training like allowed, because I don't know, triple jump is really hard on the body. And I feel like if I, if I was to, you know, compete more, I may not have had as much or had as long like longevity, you know, as far as being able to, you know, last as long as I have. And so I think, I think it's just part of his plan, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not something that it's I working. wanted to do. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's working. So I mean, I'll just stick to his plan. Hopefully, hopefully, one of these years I'll do like more more than like eight meets in a season. Hopefully, just to where like you know people can get to see me compete more. And one thing. That Gator team was stacked because I, I was doing a little research and when y'all won NCAAs indoors, your team scored 52 points. 30 of them came from the jump. Which I, I was like, wait a, wait a minute. But it, yeah. when I when I hear you and oh, I see you and CT, even, even, even Eric, I feel like you guys have, I call it in my head, I call you guys like the fellowship of the jump. Oh, like, you guys have brotherhood <laughs> and I just think that's so dope that you guys push each other to like new heights and you guys are there for each other so you support each other you guys got your little group text and everyone knows I just think the jumps have the most swag out of any other event group on track <laughs> in the track on the field period but let hold on hold on sorry hold on Let's get in. Oh, wow. This also elevated. Oh, wow. Hey, she uh, just turned up on us just now. Wow. Look, I stay elevated. Listen. Elevated women. Here, here at Track Girl Summer, we say, you know, support the hustle. Okay. Shop the collection. Oh, my God. Hey, oh, my uh. gosh. Look, oh, they got the elevator set up. That's Look, nice. support black business, support track business. I told y'all, I tell y'all every day, send a black woman some money today, but you can send it through through Will. It will get the queen. <laughs> Appreciate that. But you're not only an you're not only you know an Olympian. You are a musician. So how did you start making music? You know, if you don't know. 
Will's on track with YG. His music video with YG has like over 70 million views on YouTube. He's got al albums out. Um, Look What You Created dropped in 2017. Quoted stuff in 2020. Sometimes I just listen to it when, I, when I'm trying to, you know, get into a good vibe. Um, but when did you start making music and, and, and why do you feel like that is an outlet that you need to do? Uh, I started making music at like 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Like one, me and one of my boys that uh, I'm still like best friends with him till today. Um, we used to have like this like cassette player, like, and we would bring the boom box next to it and like, like rap into the, cause you know, back then, I don't Hold know. On. How old are you, Will? You a little younger. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm what you know about a cassette player? Like, I'm I didn't know about this. We're this. We're like almost the same age. I'm well, thirty now. Will's my Gemini twin. Okay. So back then, back then, you could press record on the like on the tape deck, and whatever you set into it would record on the tape. So, like, we would record, but it would be like songs that was on the radio, so the words would still be in the back. But we would we would rap like that. And then, um, like, we had found this microphone that we could plug up to my computer. And I had, like, at the time, we had, like, Napster, LimeWire. Like, mm -hmm. you could download stuff off of there. And so we would download oh, these God. beats. And uh, I, I had downloaded the, uh, I had somehow got the, like, software to record music on my mom's computer. And so, like, we, we would just get on there and record songs at a young age, like, just for fun. Because at the time, like... Little Bow Wow, Little Romeo were like inspirational to us. You know, like we were like, these are these are kids like out here doing it big. Like we trying to be like them. And so um we would try to make songs and we would cause uh Mike Jones had that number you could call. We would Ooh. call Mike Jones number. Mike Jones. <laughs> we would call <laughs> We would call Mike Jones, like trying to send him music and like just trying to like you know we just wanted to be young like superstars so like we would just make these songs and then you know as i got older maybe around high school like i would make songs for like our football team like I it would be like a freestyle and like the whole team everybody's name is in there so when everybody heard their name they'd turn up and it just was for fun you know um but it wasn't until like i never really put music out until that yg song like that was just I had met YG after I came back from London. We were at a club in LA and um, we had mutual friends that connected us and he just was like, come to the studio. And one of my best friends was a producer or is a producer. And so I'm like, man, like, I want to connect them too. So I, I hit my boy, I'm like, hey man, like make some beats. We going to the studio with YG. He like, but I don't make beats like that. And I'm like, well, well you do today. Do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so so he made some beats and we go to the studio and yg like he fell in love with that beat and at the time like like ty dollar signs in the studio dj musters in the studio and like they're producers as well and like we had played everybody's beats but for some reason yg just liked my boy mitch's beat and so he just started like rapping on the beat i'm nervous I'm in the studio with like hundred bloods gang members, and I'm like, dang, like I, don't I know ain't about that life. Like, this is I might be a thug on the <laughs> on the runway, but not in real life. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. So, you know, he he do the whole. Basically, he does the whole song, and then he's like, "You want to put a verse on here?" And I'm like, "I mean, I'll try." So I get in there. I'm like nervous. Dudes is all like. In the, like when you in the booth, you can see everybody, everybody looking at me. And I'm like, oh man, I'm here blowing it. They're like, bro, just turn up, just turn up. Like, say this, say that, da, 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 da. And I'm like, all right. And so I just like, I just went in there and did it. And then that was the first song that really I had done that saw the light of day. And it was, it was a good feeling like for it to be received in that way. And then it made me want to just make more music just really to be able to connect with more like connect with people in a different way because i feel like track is so niche like mm -hmm. i've been able to you know i feel like i've 
been able to have some sort of influence, I would hope, on, on you know, um, young kids that are, you know, similar to me in, in a positive way. But I think um, I just have more music, more reach with music. So um, I think that was just something that I, I feel like just touched me in a different way to be able to touch. Because I'll see kids at track meets and they won't say nothing about track. They'll be like, man, that song you did, da, da, da. And I'm like, dang, but. Uh oh, do we lose him for a second? Will well, you there? Well, can y'all well, hear me? Oh, oh yeah, there we hear you. Service is bad. Your video is is uh frozen, but we can hear you. Can hello, I tell hello, you? hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Oh man, let me see. All right, there okay. we go. Can you hear us? Oh, someone said, can oh, you know, for us I don't music. know if we can afford oh, Will, but. <laughs> to like. He's, he's going to have to call back in. Will too. Uh, maybe he will. Um, I really hope my mom gets the doorbell because. Um, All right. You know, here my he favorite is. thing though. Here he is. Uh, in music videos, a lot of rappers. Be wearing, I was saying in music videos, you see a lot of rappers rocking their chains. Will mm -hmm. out here rocking his medals. I said, <laughs> Look at here, you can't go and buy one of those. I don't care how nice your, your ice man is. Look, you ain't rocking my bling. You can't Will nobody rock those with, with me with the, with the medals. <laughs> yes, but I, I wanted to. I wanted to highlight a couple of things that you said when you were talking about that experience with YG that like, A, it yeah. sounds like if YG, because I heard you like, I'm in the booth and everybody's looking at me. And I think the first thing everybody jumps to is, man, you jump in front of millions of people. So what? But it's mm -hmm. like they pushed you out of your comfort zone. And okay. maybe had they not pushed you out of that comfort zone, like look what that turned into. But then you've also diversified yourself because I feel like that's what a lot of us fall into where we're just this we're just this athlete but you've already created yeah. something that beyond track like you got music you got a brand and clothing and so i just think that that's dope that like you're able to pour into things differently and it sounds like they're all outlets and powerful outlets for you um but yeah. they're able to pay you back <laughs> You're, sure. you're able to reap the benefits of all of those things absolutely <laughs> Let me tell you something about absolutely. Will play. Will, Will Clay is only at one of the few athletes who can go to the meet, warm up, listening to himself. Okay. okay. I don't. Hold on, hold on, hold I on. Don't. I don't listen to myself. <laughs> then, I, then you I turn around, look around, look around. Will out here sponsoring athletes. He got, he got other athletes wearing his brand. <laughs> and then... After he go win, uh, go win his jump competition, he can turn around and look at his wife go win her race. Let me just say. <laughs> you. Let me. I don't know if y'all want to call this corny or what, but I saw when you were jumping and Queen was there to support you. Yeah. And she was like doing that Insta story, and you were on your way to do your thing, and you turned around and you was like, "You good? You need anything?" And she had to be like, "Uh, sir, you about to go work? Don't worry about me. Let's just shout out to the real men that are still out there, okay?" I'm about to go handle my business, but I'm going to make sure that my lady is straight. All right? One more time. And, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I just have to figure out because not only, like, you do stuff like that, it's the little things, but also in the big things, it's like, I feel like in your moment when you got your Olympic medal, which is all about you, and then you turn around and you make it about Queen when you propose to her. And I just was like, Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. How do you have a question? I just am like, well, what like well I got a question because because we, we, we can't afford you. But Coach Nicole said, can you do our intro? We just need like 15 seconds, two lines, you know. Yeah, yeah. Y'all just, just let I me know. I got a bass message in the song, you know. <laughs> I got y'all. Y'all just let me know. Yeah. Okay. You know, let me tell you, this Will is a man that wears many hats, and <laughs> it's so oh elevate. 
Wow. <laughs> like, if you ain't in on it, it, okay. I don't That's have that. Work. This I don't have original. that. Yeah, I don't have that hat no more. Dang. I, I kept got it. That. You got that pack. Dang. I can't believe I j I forgot how that hat even looked. I, I told y'all I'm I'm a fan. I go back. Dang, Corey. That's love. Wow. I still gotta get some more of the merch. I You got a pack coming your I gotta, way. I gotta get my coins together to afford the sweatshirt, but I'm gonna get it together. Nah. <laughs> Look. <laughs> now well you jump for Adidas, but you're also a Red Bull athlete. And Puma, you had Puma, a Puma. short Who girl, where I'm Puma, Puma. I don't know. Puma, Puma, the thing Puma. is I said Puma in my head. <laughs> I apologize. Puma. I apologize. It's cool, um, it's cool. And Red Bull Red Bull put out a short film called Elevate about you. And I thought it was so great. I only have one complaint. I didn't appreciate that it was only two minutes. I needed a full hour late production. <laughs> but and your hometown and yeah. you could really see the people and the place that shaped you into the athlete and the person that you are. Yeah. Um, and you talked about, you know, your your first generation, um, you're from your family's from Sierra Leone. How was there some? What was that like growing up with like immigrant parents from Africa? Like it's a little bit. I feel like your your experience is probably a little bit different than me and Natasha's. And what was that like? And how did you end up in Arizona? I got immigrant parents, but yeah, different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, Ta Tasha probably you probably kind of had the same type of upbringing as far as like yeah, you are. We are in America, but like when we home at the house, within the house, confines of our house, like my parents are not speaking English. They're speaking Creole, you know, um, they're cooking, you know, uh, traditional meals. Like within within our home, we had those those values and we kept that culture, you know, and um, it was at I feel like at a young age. It uh, it was I was used to be embarrassed. And and it, it was at a time where I feel like I feel like in America, Africa is more um, we as African Americans we're more in tune with Africa now than better now than we were back then. That's facts. And so like at that time, I feel like that was when like obviously me being darker, like kids are like African booty scratcher, da 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 da. Like so, I used to some like sometimes be embarrassed. Yeah. But um. But as I as I grew older, I started to realize, like, wow, like I'm really in tune with with where I'm from, you know, originally. And um, you know, both of my parents they came to the U.S. for college. You know, my mom she had went to Reading University in in the U.K. and then she went to University of Arizona to get her doctorate in um, nutrition. And then my oh, dad, my <laughs> my dad, he um. He he came to the U.S. to get his MBA in uh, in Arizona oh, as well. Yeah. So, so like, my parents really came out here really to like better themselves to take care of their children. Um, but like, I always I, I feel like I never got away from that the culture of Sierra Leone. Like it was always there, you know, at home till this day. You know, I just came from Arizona yesterday and i was eating all african food at home all sierra leonean food at home so like i i think it's something that i want to continue on too so like now like i pay so much more attention like to how my parents are like raised me and how they you know speak to me like i i can speak a little bit of the language and i'm like trying to learn the food queens trying to learn how to cook the food like just these little things that we want to pass down to the next generation i love that i love mm -hmm. like like I said, my parents are immigrants too. And I joke, I run for Team USA, but I ain't really one of y'all. Like when you talk about like <laughs> growing up with the values, it's true. Like in your household, like I, I'm smelling the jerk chicken and the oxtail and the, we call it macaroni pie. I'm smelling all of that now. And just like the culture and the values and 
And I, I like I feel you like wanting to be able to pass those traditions down to my son now. So shout out to mm-hmm. Queen, you know, embracing yeah. the culture and and learning the things That's for awesome. you and the family. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to come by and get a plate because I'm not gonna lie. I love yeah. my parents very much, but I had a I had a couple plates of Natasha's mom's food, and I I did ask her to Ooh. adopt me. Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, 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 I saw eating two or three times a hug this woman, Min Beal. Uh. <laughs> oh wow! I need to see what's up. I need to get a plate too. My mom can throw down. What's what's okay. even funnier is my mom can throw down, and my mom is Trinidadian and British, more Trinidadian than she was just born in London. And my father is okay. Jamaican, and my father has owned a restaurant for as long as I, I can remember. Um, and so, of course, my mom is the better cook, but <laughs> I'm telling you, the culture, I'm just like, I, I was lucky. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, my parents are the same. Like, my my dad cooks just as much as my mom. Like, I can't even, dang, this sounds bad, but I don't know who cooks better. Like, my mom or my dad. I think <laughs> when you say that your dad cooks, I that's that's another one of the things that I'm like, I feel like is a non-American thing because I feel like in West Indian culture, a lot of times the men actually do cook more than the women most a lot of times, not all the time. Oh, wow. But so it's not wow. surprising to hear that like your dad also throws down and you don't know who's the better cook. But I yeah. also wanted to give them a shout out because mom came to be a doctor. Dad came for his MBA. Excellence is the standard. So no wonder... <laughs> You are, and you do the things that you do because, I mean, and, <laughs> you didn't have no choice. I didn't. And to get to, to and to get to the answer to that question, what I would do is offer my services. I could, I could, I could come out to Arizona, get a plate of moms, get a plate of dads, and offer my expert <laughs> opinion as to okay. who's the better cook. You know, it might take me a couple meals to figure it out. Um, <laughs> But I can help, you know, if you needed me. We can do that. Um, no, nah, yeah, we can do that. We'll have okay. like a little panel. You could be on the panel. All right. Yeah. I will, I, let me get back. Let me get back. Because we there's a lot of things to talk about with Will Clay. <laughs> Oops. So you grew up, court, according to the doc, you grew up on the south side of Phoenix. Yeah. Which... And you said, you know, uh, Jer- and it was Jeremy. You said, I'm pretty sure Jeremy came to recruit you for, for football or at a football game. And there was a shootout after the game. And you said, yeah. you know, a lot of your friends yeah. ended up in jail and or or worse. And yeah. how, like, one, I feel like to be the one that, like, made it, got out. Like, but I, I feel like I always see you, like, trying to pour back into community, whether that's your local community or the community as as a whole. And can you just talk about like that upbringing and also just yeah. how that has like influenced you to be like, hey, I have to like make sure I'm pouring in to my people. Absolutely. Um, at the most, like, I think the most vital point of like my young life as a child or I guess adolescence was when I was thrust into the streets more like, I, I, I wouldn't even call it the streets, but just being outside. But my parents, at that time, my parents divorced. Um, my mom, it was weird to me because like, I'm like, mom, you have a like a doctorate, but like, but why, why aren't you rich? I used to always be like, why are, you, why are you not like rich? Like, why don't you have like a high paying job, but you have a doctorate in nutrition? Like, why are we struggling? It was weird to me. And so my mom, like my dad, he lived in Florida at the time. My mom, she uh, just worked a lot. So the community really raised me. You know, I, it really, um, I guess you could say it took, it took a village. And, you know, there are uh, good parts of the village and there are bad parts of the village, you know, and I think I was just blessed to, to kind of escape you know, through a, through a route of, of sports and academics. And um, yeah, I I had a game one day, Coach Fisher came to recruit me, 
you know, it was, we were playing against, you know, a team basically that that school is right in the middle of um, South Phoenix. And uh, there was a shooting at the at my game. And Coach Fisher had like, that was when I realized he was a real one. He he walked my mom like to her car, at, like as this is all going on. We are already in the bus. The team's in the bus. He's with my mom. And when uh, I got home later that night, I'm like, you know, checking on my mom. She's like, yeah, Coach Fisher, you walked into the car. Like, I'm good. Da, da, da. I'm like, dang, man, he, he's a real one. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I feel like for me to to have had people that looked out for me, you know, in these neighborhoods and then just in school and things like that, it just makes me want to be able to do the same for the next, you know, generation coming up. You know, I feel like it was a, a huge part of the reason why I'm here today. And, you know, I, I feel like just to be able to, to pour whatever I can to help whoever it can be, you know, that may have been in a similar situation, it's no telling where, you know, they, that next generation can go. You know, they could, they could do far better than I, than I can or that I'll be able to do. So, like... I think that's just, I think that's my way of trying to just be a positive in my future, period. Because the next generation is going to be the ones that push the envelope with all of this. Like the whole world is going to be so much different because of them, because of their minds and because of just what they, what they're capable of. I, um, so. I feel like I connect with so much of what you, what you're saying and you know, immigrant parents, divorced parents, mom worked a lot, worked hard. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily mean that like, you know, like you said, your the streets kind of becomes your village a little bit. Um, but then you had sports and I'll never forget my mom. I went through a little phase where I was like, I don't know if I want to run track anymore. My mom was like, that's fine, but you're going to find something else. You're not coming straight <laughs> home. <laughs> and it sounds like it's a similar thing where it's like sports kept you out of trouble. It kept you busy. And then now look what it's also brought to you. And then the connection with coach Fisher back then to see like, Oh no, this man is going to make sure that my family is okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that again, yeah. like your village can come from so many places, but being able to, to find those positive village influences, I think, um, you know, what you're doing is amazing to, to then now pay it forward because there are so many other kids out there that, that need the extracurricular activities to keep them off the streets, to keep them busy, to give them something to dream for, give them something to work towards. So, I mean, kudos to you, man. Just, just a, a great citizen all around. Yeah. I appreciate that, um, Sasha. Thank you. No, you know, everyone knows I'm a fan of World Play. Um, Corey's over there trying to get it together to ask the next question. <laughs> no, so one of the things I really appreciate about you is like your whole vibe, your whole aesthetic. Uh, when you and Queen pop off on the gram, I'm just like, yo, y'all really be out here making me believe in love. It's a uh, moment. It's, it be a whole moment. <laughs> They be out here like doing whole Love Jones covers, and I'm like, all oh, right. The one where you are hanging. And then you are hanging from, from a pull-up bar and Quinn's just hanging off you so great. And I'm like, yo, they, they really out here. But what is it like being married to another athlete? Are y'all competitive? How do you balance? Like, I got to train, you got to train, you're traveling for me, I'm traveling for me. Uh, because I feel like a, a lot of times, especially with male athletes, you see like a lot of male athletes just have a, a wife that is just like the cheerleader. She's just making sure you're good. And you have a wife who's also like out here balling on her own accord. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that took some getting used to, you know, because um, track is not uh, very structured, I guess. Like it, it's, it can go like, I, like you said, I can be at a meet. She can be at a meet. Like there's, it's just kind of up in the air. And even with just training, like trying to get and be with the right coach in the right area and things like that. So for a while, we were long distance. You know, she was in South Carolina first and then she was in LA and I've been in San Diego since 2011 or 2012. So it was, it was tough, you know, and realizing like, wow, like 
this woman is she's just as invested in her in the sport as I am like and I want her to do well just like I want to do well and so it was tough it was tough I feel like it got better around like 2018 2019 um as far as us living together and like having a uh coaches that were in the same place but even then living together it's like we have different ways of going about um our days Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like as far as like me like I she wakes up earlier than me like she'll be like why don't you eat breakfast like what do you like how do you not eat breakfast before you go to practice and I'm just like I'll just have a shake like we go about things differently. She like so she's like, dang, like, is that what you expect me to do? And I'm like, nah, like if you want to eat, like and you want to get up earlier, it's just, you know, things that we have to get used to as far as how the other person move. And um I think what helped what what also helps is that she's an athlete, so she can push me and she knows the sport. And so she can keep me on my P's and Q's and really like make sure that, you know, I'm doing what I gotta do. And I think I do the same with her, you know, and I've, I've, um, there have been times where I feel like even I've had to motivate Queen in, in times where she, you know, was maybe have been down or maybe I had been down and she had to get me back on. Like, nah, like you still, there's still more for you to do. You know, I still see so much more for you in the sport. And, um, it's, it's interesting. Our sport is interesting in itself. So to to be with someone, you know, who is also, you know, in the same ranks as you in this sport is interesting. But I think uh, all in all, we've done pretty well with it. You know, it's it has it's had its ups and downs, but we've we've uh, figured it figured it out for us. Say so. <laughs> 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 Y'all are here to try a couple goals. It's my goals, period. We're competitive, though. I you you asked about competitiveness. We are both competitive. We uh, <clears throat> like we'll compete. We'll compete with like the the dumbest stuff. Like I don't know. We'll, like even just cooking. Like we'll have our own little cooking contest at the house. Like who can make this better or that oh, whatever. God. Like we just you know we just like to keep it interesting. So it's fun. I need a, I need more uh, Will and Queen con- content. I want y'all be, to become one of those YouTube couples. That's what I really want. <laughs> I would say watch and not and even if you just in a text to me and just like <laughs> <laughs> we'll just send you that's not creepy. Like, not <laughs> creepy at all. <laughs> well, that's what me and Ajay does. I like she'll be like make this TikTok and it just it just be going to her. But you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. We're going to send you some videos and pictures, some exclusives. He's a little trying to say. Exclusives. Well, don't, don't be pressured <laughs> by, <laughs> by Corey and her physicians. <laughs> no, I, I got you. One more thing to talk about is you got Elevate Clothing. How did that come about? How did you become a designer? Like, um, man, I I originally started Elevate to well, I mean it is now, but I originally started it to be a foundation, and um, it was just something that the clothes was just how I would get the money to donate. So when when I first started Elevate, I um, I was designing. And I was making these clothes and hats and stuff, but I was I was donating all the money every time. <laughs> so like, so I would I would basically I was putting my money I was donating my money, but like we would I would put up to make the clothes, we would sell them, and then I would donate all the money. So the next collection, I put up the money, make the clothes, donate all again. So like. It was just this cycle of starting from zero. And I'm like, all right, this is not really feasible. Like it's 
it feels good, but it's not really like feasible to run an actual business. And so after a while, like I started to, you know, like be a little bit better with how we were, you know, donating. And then I'm like, well, let me just actually really make this into a foundation. So Quinn and I started Elevate Youth Empowerment. And so now we're just starting to like put together programs for that and camps and we want to, I want to start to like, just give kids exposure. Like, uh, I want to take kids to like Africa and I want them to be, ex be able to experience, you know, other lifestyles and be exposed to, because I think, I feel like even for me and my friends, for what I've seen and experienced just from track around the world, like it has just given me a different understanding, mm -hmm. understanding on a lot of things. And, um, I would love to like give someone else that type of experience to where like they come back and they just have a, a different understanding of, of things and are just, you know, well-versed. So that's what we're doing now with Elevate the Foundation. But as far as the clothes, like now that just kind of lives on its own and, um, you know, it, it's fun. You know, I enjoy designing and uh, it's cool to like just see people wear the clothes and for it to have a good message behind it um you know just growth you know um constant growth always looking to to be better a better version of yourself so it's cool i enjoy it you know it's it's i wouldn't say it is um as consuming as it used to be i feel like i, I have a team now that helps me to do most stuff with with elevate so it's not as consuming I don't do as much, but, you know, it's still cool to see people, like, wearing it and stuff like that. It's dope. And you see athletes wearing it, too. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've, we've had, like, a couple athletes we work with to, um, like, we'll do collections for them and allow them to make money. Like, we did a collection with Omar and Jared Eaton, and they were able to sell their uniform and, and make some money as far as, you know, because it's – it's a weird game in our sport. Like you can be, right. you can be a five, top five jumper and not have a contract, which is weird to me. And so like, I just, obviously Omar's a friend of mine, you know, so I'm just like, man, like at the time, this was before he signed with ASICs and stuff. I'm like, man, let's just, let's do something like to where, you know, we, we can make some money and at least have, have you reaped something like you out here winning Dama League meets, but for some reason these these shoe companies don't want to pay you. So it's, it was weird to me, and um, I just wanted to be able to do something, whatever I could, because um, it's yeah. I think I think our sport needs an overhaul. You know when it comes to things like that, um, and whatever you know we can do as athletes. I think we should, you know, to try to change the game. What did I do? I'm always messing something up. <laughs> <laughs> but like this, this here, y'all can't see me, but hear this. This is why I am a fan of Will Clay because it it is so apparent what kind of heart you have. You have a loving heart, a giving heart. You always have a smile on your face. You are always positive and like. You not only are like, I feel like a lot of people, they talk about the issues that are in our sport, but you're actively working to find solutions to it and putting, trying to put money in your, in your people's pockets, which I think is amazing. Um, and that's why I like, I stay president of your fan club. That's love. You know, my you're not part of the fan club though. You, you just fam. <laughs> Will, Will's also not a good luck charm because when me and Delilah went one and two at Worlds, you and uh, Christian went one and two at the Worlds at the exact same time. Like, y'all yeah. were jumping as we were running past, y'all. So I'm like, Will, Will's a real one. But we spent, we don't we spent a lot of time together that year. I feel like I saw you like every day in London. I know. I feel like it I saw you like Bronx every day at breakfast. It brought me a lot of joy. <laughs> it was giving me good vibes. Me too. Will, me too. Me Will too. Clay is the king of vibes. I don't know this. 
Um, but we don't want to take any more of your time. Uh, uh, thank you so, so much for coming and um, hanging with Drop Girl Summer. Unless, Natasha, you have more questions. No, I don't. Thank you, Queen, for letting uh, us have Will for... Was, well, how long we had you? 45 minutes? <laughs> we, we interrupted said, the lunch you date. Letting them have me for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she said, y'all good? <laughs> uh, and we have all of the links to support Will in the description of this video. You can shop his clothing line. You can listen to his music on Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you want to listen to music. Sometimes I just stream, even if I'm like, I don't have time to listen to music. Sometimes I just stream your music on repeat just to get you your, your coins. Because I'm like, like, hey, I, that's love. Watch I got his a documentary. Video dropping, I got a video dropping on the eighth. Come on, on the eighth this Wednesday. Come on. Okay. Well, Aisha asked for your why. closing yeah. thoughts, so go ahead. If there's anything we didn't touch on top of this video coming out on the eighth, what do the people need to know? How do we support, shop, um, elevate, watch the short film, stream the music, video coming on the 8th? What's up? What What else? Did, I, did, you got so much going on. You don't even know what you got going on. Look at them over there like, I, I feel like, like there's it. something. <laughs> I I got a few things coming I, wanna, I want to talk about, but I can't. But I would say to just athletes to just, do what you love, even outside of sports, um, and have good people around you, mm -hmm. good people that give you good advice. I think that's something that has helped me so much. It has it has allowed me to do so much outside of the sport and and to to use the money that I make within the sport correctly. You know, I feel like a lot of athletes just, you know, they don't manage their money right. And um, oh. it just it makes it makes it to where when they're done with the sport they can tra they cannot transition um, smoothly, and um, you know I just I think that that has something to do with with uh, who's in your corner you know um, outside of agents and stuff like that just actual advisors people that are professionals and know what they're talking about um, so yeah I think you know that's just my advice to to uh to the athletes out there and to you know everyone else just continue to try to be a better version of yourself love yourself have faith in yourself keep going um and just yeah live your life don't 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 try to be out here trying to be the next person live your life and love your life that's yeah that's it oh quick question it's a is it a music video that's dropping on the eighth on wednesday mm -hmm. yes okay, we video. play get a little travel summer you know put it put it on the platform just just to get more eyes on it but so, like i said yeah. support, support will play support just we appreciate support try girl summer out. support try girl summer too I love you know, we get we, yes, we get a, yeah. we get a new we're getting a new promo song or intro song from Will. He said he was, so I'm gonna yeah. hold to it. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so we can stop well, doing this corny jingle. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Corey, but it's <laughs> I mean <laughs> It's gonna start with the jingle and then the beat gonna drop. Look, <laughs> I'm trying to wrap the show up, guys. Sorry, sorry. Do your thing. Do the things. Do the things. Exactly. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, be sure to follow us everywhere at Trackle Summer, Twitter, ID, Facebook. Um, follow us and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow Will Clay at Will Clay on Instagram, Twitter, anywhere else that they can follow you. Elevate dot elevateclothing.com. All the links are in the bio. I already told you guys that. Follow crazy. Natasha. Follow me. And we'll see you guys Wednesday. We'll, we're having um, Anna Cockrell on the show. Really excited about that. You know, we're talking to Queen's oh, wife. Now, or we're talking to Queen's husband today. 
We're going to talk about the second person to complete the queen double on Wednesday. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. And we'll be back. Same place. Who knows what time. And remember, (laughs) no matter what time. Oh, no. Why does it? Gosh, darn it. Like, you're so close. You were on a roll. (laughs) And remember, no matter what time of the year it is, it's always a track all summer, baby. And that's our show. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all.